Hey everybody! It's been a while, but last time you might remember that we beat the game. But sometimes, just beating the game isn't enough. Sometimes it's not enough to beat it. Sometimes you have to embarrass it. Get mad! Make it rue the day that it spawned a zoomer on either side of a morph ball tunnel when you only had three energy left. Today is one of those days, and we are going to make Metroid pay for ruining many childhoods with the Super Swimsuit Speedrun. Now, the code I entered at the beginning, all it does is get rid of the regular power suit and let us play with this version of the sprite. Our first speed trick is right here. By taking out those two screes, three more screes spawn here instead of an obnoxious zoomer in this morph ball tunnel. That allows us to just keep on running through without interference. I let off a shot at that, uh, Oh, that flying dude whose name I can't recall right now. To slow him down just a little bit to create the opening that I used to jump by him and the zoomer to get by unscathed. Shooting things is, uh, it's not always for killing enemies. Sometimes you just want to slow them down so that you can move a little bit faster. Just like when you're regularly playing Metroid, these long vertical shafts are going to take up a, you know, pretty good deal of the amount of time that you're playing the game, but sometimes they have a purpose, as we'll see on the way back from the missiles. Of course, descending the shafts is pretty easy, as most of them have a corridor on either the left or right side that you can just fall straight down. No need to deal with these guys, let's just bolt for the missiles. Alright, and that's going to do it for missiles for this run. I'm actually not going to pick any more missiles up for the rest of it, other than the ones that you get for defeating the bosses, of course. I'm not going to just cheat my way to the end. For this run, I am actually going to defeat both bosses. The uh, record for a run defeating both bosses is something like 23 minutes. I'm not quite that good, but we'll see how well I do. Now, normally, I wouldn't want to be, you know, just killing all the zoomers, because that will slow you down. And I'm not just doing it for the health. This is actually another uh, spawn manipulation attempt. By killing those five zoomers, I make it so that the waivers here spawn in a favorable pattern that I can just run straight by without dealing with. These waivers do a lot of damage, and you don't want them getting in your way, or else you're not just going to get slowed down. You're probably going to die. Now, an old adage for uh, speedruns and that sort of thing is that you should take damage to save time. Well, that's only really applicable if, you know, taking damage actually helps you move forward. In that case, it didn't. It dumped me into the acid instead. Fortunately, there is an energy tank coming up, and I'll get a chance to refill. But not before I do some excessively dangerous maneuvering with waivers. Alright, maybe not that dangerous. I did do a full stop for a second there. Alright, but now I'm fully healed up, and uh, that means that I can jump through things with reckless abandon, just like that. When you get hit in the middle of a jump while you're heading up, you uh, bounce upwards a little bit. And if you hold down forward, like so, you actually get a little extra height from uh, the jump. And it lets you go straight through an enemy and make jumps that normally would be a little tricky, if not impossible. The bombs are next. Now, one of the really tricky things about speedrunning Metroid, and this is something that led to a lot of failed recordings, is uh, you kind of have to get lucky with missile drops, or know specific ways to make them drop. And I actually looked up the uh, record speedrun on how to get missiles to drop, and I only saw one instance of manipulating the drops, but we're going to use it right now because what I need to do is get five missiles before we get back to the Brinstar Ice Beam. By bombing that zoomer, then killing that flying thing whose name I still can't remember, and then jumping and firing a missile at this one, we get five missiles before even leaving. It's pretty handy. Unfortunately, I don't know any other 
place to do that in the game. But fortunately, I also only need to get five more missiles in order to get everything that I want and to Ridley. Basically, down in Ridley's layer, there are two paths, to the right and to the left. The speedrun that I watched beforehand uh, takes the path to the right. That's actually faster than the one I'm taking. I'm going to take the one to the left because I am not as good at Metroid as that guy, and I was running into a lot of problems where I would walk into a room and uh, have no choice but to die because the enemies spawn in such a pattern that they hit you before you get a chance to move. So I need to get an energy tank in Ridley's Lair to do that. And I think you know which one I'm going to get. But first, the Ice Beam. Also, if you notice, uh, so the code I put in just gives you the swimsuit, gives you none of the power-ups. So this is the only time that you see Samus like this, without, you know, green hair that you get from having the various suit. And it also means it's the only time that you see her become actual blonde, because that's what color she turns when you switch over to missiles. And speaking of missiles, I got pretty lucky in that corridor. Uh, I actually picked up three on the way there, so I only need one more guy to drop a missile on my way down to Morphair. Quick use of a bomb jump right there. I didn't need to do the unmorph trick there. Uh, you actually don't have to unmorph to get distance and jumping out of midair with a bomb. As you saw right there, you can actually just stand there and have it bounce you up. Now, I'm actually uh, not going to collect any more items for the rest of the run, other than energy tanks. That's the exception, is energy tanks. I'll get 150 missiles from killing both bosses, but uh, I'm going to die in Torian if I don't have enough energy tanks, and I'm actually going to die against the bosses if I don't have enough energy tanks, because the way you beat bosses quickly is generally by throwing yourself at them. Now something that you want to keep in mind after you get the Ice Beam is that you can no longer easily kill enemies without missiles. And it's really, it's painful for me, given my propensity for just shoving missiles at everything that moves, to just not start letting them off. But now that I've got my five missiles back, I need to keep them. And uh, let me tell you, it was a struggle. Alright, so I've made it into Norfair. I have just 100 energy. 100 energy is pretty good. That should be enough to get me down to the next energy tank, provided that I don't screw up. Spoilers, I don't screw up, but, uh, well, things get a little hairy. This is a classic example of taking damage to save time. I just burn straight through that Nova, I don't even care. That Nova 2, they don't do enough damage to make them worth... They, they don't do enough damage to make them be something that I have to shoot instead of just run straight through. Now this thing is a time sink. I hate these when I'm playing normally. They're even worse when you're trying to play quickly because you're like, come on, come on bomb, explode. Come on bomb, keep going. They're even worse when you come back up. I don't know if morph ball maneuvering is actually faster than doing it when you are unmorphed, but I'm just going to assume it is, because it looks cooler and it looks faster even if it's not. Now here, I'm getting a lot of help from the game's graphical slowdown. I might lose a couple seconds here or there, but I also won't fall into the lava. If you fall into this particular lava, you're kind of hosed. You have to jump around like that, and then fully sink in to jump out. And I'm just so great that I fell into the lava twice. You know, just to make it look a little harder. In all seriousness, though, this was very difficult. I did something like 13 practice runs before I started trying to do it for real. And many of the real runs were scrapped, due to missiles, obviously, due to dying and a couple because my recording desynced, and that 
really sucked. Now, if you'll remember, in here is the room with the long, hidden passage that we can use to get by. Oh god! This was a scary moment. Fortunately, bombs give you invincibility frames so that Sidehopper wasn't able to take me out. And it would have taken me out. The game's kind of freaking out a bit. Keeps trying to switch my life counter to zero, but there's no justification for it. And this is why I needed the other five missiles. That's the last door I'm going to need to open for quite a while. And I'm up to two energy tanks. That was a tough squeeze right there, but I make it through this hall pretty well. Take a little damage, save a little time, but uh, overall I got a pretty favorable spawn pattern for the side hopper, so I'm feeling pretty good. Also, going through that passage lets me go straight down to Ridley, while avoiding going through the hallway with all the multi violas without any missiles. They actually go through it in uh, the speedrun that's better than this one, but I'm really awful at that hallway, so I decided to skip it until I can blow everything away. This hallway, also pretty challenging without missiles. Even when I made the platform there, I still slipped. Fortunately, I didn't slip there. That would have been disaster. Hey, it's our boy, Ridley! We're gonna freeze him. Freeze all his fireballs. It sucks not having missiles to fight him with, so it's gonna take quite a while to kill him. And, uh, we're gonna have to refreeze the fireballs a couple times, which is slightly problematic. I say slightly problematic because I happen to freeze them at just the wrong height to just hold down B and beat him. So I'm going to adopt this method instead. It's called using bombs, and uh, just bombing to either side of him. I like to think of it as Samus just doing all these crazy acrobatics, like uh, if other M didn't suck. This is also the same principle that's used to bomb Kraid to death uh, without dying yourself. You take about half the hits that you should when you do that because of the invincibility frames from bombs. Alright, Ridley's dead. Samus showed a little leg, and we are on our way back up to Brinstar with missiles. Now that I have missiles, things are going to get a lot easier, because holy crap, I'm going to blow some stuff away. Also, miss a lot, but I got 75 of them, and I'm just going to roll the dice with the Metroids at the end to make sure that I get enough missiles to actually finish the game. Torian is a particular challenge for me, just in general, not necessarily in this particular run. And these guys aren't much of a challenge either, once I can shoot them. Or rather, now that I can shoot them. Normally I'd have a screw attack here, and that would make things way easier. But I'll have to settle for just missling everything. And I'm okay with that, I like missling everything. It's fun. These guys are also a lot more likely to drop uh, 20 energy pickups than 5s, and that helps you to heal up if you took a few more hits than you would have liked in the Ridley fight. Or in the hallway. That's a false door, or rather it leads you to a dead end. We of course need the very top door. I do like how even if the very back end of your missile hits something, it still explodes and kills whatever it hits. It's very handy. That Chozo weapon technology is pretty great. Alright, and we are out of Ridley's Lair. It went actually extraordinarily well this time. This is normally where my runs ended in disaster. Uh, here and at the Norfair Ice Beam, basically what I was doing is if I didn't get enough missiles in time to pick up the Brinstar Ice Beam. I would end up with five by the time I got to Norfair, so I would go up, I would bomb jump up to the Norfair Ice Beam and do the bomb jump to get it. And uh, sometimes that just didn't work out, and I landed in the lava, and bad things happened. 
Also, in all of those particular runs, I never got the glitch to go off that stopped those seahorses from spitting fire at me. That's about the only real advantage I can think of to uh, getting the Norfair Ice Beam instead of the Brinstar one. It's just way faster to do it your first time around. And now, another long vertical shaft climb. Climbing these is really the worst. I really dislike it. I would much rather be able to just shine spark up all of these things. If only life were that simple in 1986. Nope. Gotta keep on jumping. This part in particular uh, irks me. Because if you get the timing wrong for when the blocks respawn, you could be there for quite a while. But that's, uh, that's it for Norfair. All the hard stuff's done, you just have to make it back. I was kind of hoping that uh, jumping into that purple guy would let me boost my jump upwards to the platform, but it didn't. You know, after all that, uh, after listening to Spine Shark, you know, I just can't listen to the regular Norfair music without it being horribly corrupted by my CPU. It just feels like it's missing something. Probably whatever uh, secret hidden tone or wavelength is melting my brain when I listen to it. Alright, so next up is uh, Kraid. It's actually uh, not as difficult as you might think to get through Kraid but I'm making it interesting by falling into the acid. Totally not a terrible screw-up. Nor was that, or that, or that. I'm not having the worst hallway of my run. Alright, maybe I am. Fortunately, that is, I believe, the worst of it. So, I feel that I need four energy tanks in order to beat Mother Brain. Now, I have a couple options. I can get the one in Kraid's room, and in fact I can get that one in the middle of the fight if I screw up and wind up at very low life. However, I do want to get one beforehand, which means that I either have to get the one in Kraid's lair that requires some bomb jumping tricks and uh, precision that doesn't always work. Like, after getting the energy tank in that uh, corridor off to the right, you have to unmorph and jump pretty fast if you don't want to waste a lot of time. Or you can do this. By bombing this zoomer and scrolling off and coming back, I can make that guy spawn. And since I freeze him at just the right height, I'm able to jump up to this energy tank. And now I can ignore the one that's at the start of Kraid's Lair, and I don't have to do that particular bomb jump. Take that, Zoomer. Alright, so I don't know if you fall faster as the ball or as regular Samus. I suspect it doesn't matter, but I can tell you this, is that when you unmorph, you do just flat out stop for a fraction of a second. That's the same fraction of the second that you need to use to jump if you want to jump in midair with the unmorph trick, etc. Now, what I'm going to do is use the unmorph trick right there, and uh, we're going to go in the route that I used to exit Crates later last time. We're actually going to have to come back this way and exit it anyways, which is kind of a shame because I don't want to climb the hallway or the uh, long vertical shaft at the end of this hall. Unfortunately, we can't have everything we want in life. But at least I can go down this shaft first for a change. Feels pretty good, but not as good as Shine Sparking up that in Zero Mission. So we are already at the same floor as Kraid. Uh, sadly, this means that we don't get to blow away fake Kraid. But, you know, I'll live. 
especially considering that I've made it relatively uh, intact. 283 is a pretty good amount of energy, especially for the tactic that I'm going to use. That's called freeze his spikes, then walk up, shove your missiles down his throat, and uh, blow him away. Pretty good strategy, right? And now I'm going to refill. To get it without the high jump boots, you need to shoot it on the way down, sink all the way into the acid, and then uh, bomb jump up. So the actual falling physics with the ball is kind of strange. If you want to actually go into a morph ball tunnel on your way down, you generally have to uh, approach it from the top. You can't approach it from the bottom. You can fall in from the top, but you can't bounce in from the bottom. It's a little strange, but once you get used to it, you can do all sorts of neat tricks. Fortunately, I don't really know any neat tricks for this area. At this point, I turned off the Speed Demos archives bit, because... Well, all I really needed to know was how to manipulate the missile drops to get past the first part of the run. That was almost disaster. I don't know if I would have just restarted if I had fallen right there, but I highly suspect I might have, and possibly even just given up on this entirely. That is how much I hate this particular hallway. Fortunately, everything came up frosty, and we are on our way out. But wait, you might have noticed that we, or rather recalled, that we don't have a clear path back out of here. And that's what I realized right about there. I even screwed up the jump, thinking about it. Fortunately, bouncing through this acid gave me plenty of time to think about the incredibly dangerous and foolhardy thing that I was going to do to get out of here. Observe. I am amazed that I made that particular bomb jump, and that I didn't just slam into the wall and fall and be very sad. But after that point, I was like, yeah, you know, I got this. I'm gonna beat this thing, and I'm gonna shave six minutes off my previous best time, and it is gonna be awesome. Alright, so there's only one thing left to do, and that is take out the Mother Brain and escape. To do that, if you'll recall, Torian is accessed from the very top of Brinstar. So we need to go back to our favorite, the very long, very blue vertical shaft, and climb all the way up to the top. Also done pretty well so far in this run in not screwing up any of the jumps in these shafts. That can really uh, kill your time if you miss a jump and fall at all. It's not as bad if if you just miss a jump and wind up in the or wind up on the same platform you started from, but it's when you know you fall and you get hit by an enemy and they start juggling you and it looks more like the game of Capcom vs SNK than Metroid. That's when you uh, run into problems. I'm also still pretty bad at just tapping the fire button once. I blame Mega Man for this. It makes me bad at Ice Beam. Anytime now. Really, it at this point it just felt like the vertical shaft was going on forever. And when I got to that door, I was like, oh my god, really? I'm only at the first door? Fortunately, the rest of it isn't as long. And soon enough, we're there. At this point, nothing's going to stop me. feel pretty good about my, uh, well, I was feeling pretty good about my dodging ability until I got hit by that guy, but I feel as though I recovered nicely, and then I realized that the thing I said previously about never opening a door again was wrong.
Now then. Chorian. So, there's two schools of thought that I was debating between. One was killing all the Metroids to maximize my chances of getting the drops I need, which is a lot of missiles and some health. I want to go in with as close to full health as possible because I'm really bad at the Mother Brain Chamber. And I need lots of missiles. Not only because I'm really bad at the Mother Brain Chamber, but because it takes quite a few to get through the Zebatites and the Mother Brain herself. So the compromise I settled on was that I was going to skip the first room full of Metroids and then start killing them. And unfortunately, the first one was too close for me to get them both at once. What I really want to do is get as many two-for-ones on a Metroid killing as I can. That one drops some missiles, which is very helpful, but I'm not feeling very good given that I have to burn another five on this door. And it's going to take more than 60 to actually beat the game. It's uh, 8 for Zebatite, and I believe 30 for Mother Brain herself. So that's... Uh... I can't remember. But what I do know is that the Rinkas here were being a real pain in the ass. Their uh, spawning in many of the test runs was just literally right on top of me more often than not. And for I was fortunate enough to get a decent spawn of them this time. Alright, we're getting close. One more corridor of Metroids to go. I'm okay with my health, but I need a lot more missiles than that if I'm gonna win. And fortune smiled upon me. Giving me three missile pickups in a row. I thought the Metroid got me there, which could have been disastrous, but it didn't. And I got another missile power up. At this point, I'm like, alright, 112. Pretty good, unless I wind up completely screwing things up. And things did not start particularly well. As I had trouble making it past the first Zebatite. But hey, that's why I made sure to get four energy tanks instead of three, and fill them all up as much as possible beforehand. I also kind of wish I had the long beam right there, but there's a lot of things I kind of wish I had. It's basically all of the suit upgrades. And that jump was another case of uh, NES slowdown helping me out a lot. Unfortunately, immediately after, things didn't go so well. Right there, for instance. But I'm finally there. I'm at the Mother Brain. And I've got an excellent vantage point. Or rather, I did before I got knocked into lava a bunch. I'm having, I have a lot of trouble with uh, freezing the Rinkos, and that's because of my itchy trigger finger. So instead, I've opted to just avoid them as much as I can, even though in the end that will increase my time. At this point, I'm looking at the clock, and I'm like, wow, oh, I may actually finish this in under half an hour. Which would be crazy, considering that my previous best time was around 35 minutes. So right now, at this moment, you're seeing a time of about 29.15. That's where you are in the video. Uh, I'd say deduct about five seconds from the start to uh, make up for the password screen. So basically I need to get out of here by 30.05 and I will have a sub-30 time. Or I might just fall down and it could be total disaster. But I didn't, and the mission was a complete success, completed in under half an hour. The limit for the best ending is under one hour, and so our reward is 
a true piece in space, and a two-piece bathing suit. That was hot in the 80s. And that's it! That is the game in under half an hour, start to finish, without any hacks or sploits, or starting with all the suit upgrades. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it was a lot more fun to play than just uh, stomping through the game with all of the upgrades, though possibly not as satisfying. I mean, it's an interesting challenge to put to yourself to do a low percentage run of a Metroid game, but at the same time, it can feel kind of wrong, because you know that part of the point is to pick up all the stuff and become ridiculously powerful and blow everything to bits. But, you know, I enjoy doing this. I don't think I'd want to do it again. I don't think I would want to play a hard mode run of Metroid Fusion or Zero Mission. I believe Mecha Prime's done both. He's uh, currently doing Fusion. I know he did a 0% run of it. But, yeah. I... that's... no, I couldn't do that. Modern Metroid games, I am all about using all the tools I can possibly get, and basically kicking the crap out of everything and firing missiles at everything that moves. And I'm really glad that original NES Metroid gives you missiles for killing the bosses as a reward. Because otherwise, there was no way that I was beating this game in under an hour. I would have been collecting too many missiles. And that brings us to the end of the Super Swimsuit Speedrun. Thanks for watching.